Oh, gang, welcome. Monday nights. We will be joined shortly by Zoe talking all things what women want and with her background in sexuality, we'll very much get on that path. There she is. This is her first time, so hopefully she can work out how to request to join and then we will get this party started. Zoe, there should be, I think it's a yellow, um, no. She got it. She worked it out. Nailed it. <laughs> well done. Thanks. I'm feeling very, um, yeah, this is like, I have this whole, it's not often you get to do things that are like, I have no idea what I'm doing, you know, like, because we're in COVID, we're just at home, we know what we're doing, but thanks for having me. Thanks for um, being here. What a little interesting relationship you've got yourself in with Instagram at the moment. Yeah, the bastards. Motherfuckers. <laughs> I actually you know want what? to go straight down that path in a sec because this is exciting. This this just sets the precedent for our chat tonight, which is perfect. Okay. For those that haven't um, worked out, which will be plenty of them, Zoe's account just <laughs> got, like, shut down. No, do they even give you a reason they don't do that? It's just like, we don't like your content. It's too saucy. We're shutting you down. They said, I was walking across the street and I had my phone in my hand and I looked down and it was like, um, your account has been disabled for breaching community guidelines. We will look at it in 24 hours and see if this is our final um, decision. And of course, 24 hours goes and I'm like, hello, anybody? And it's completely deleted. They said that there's no recourse I can take. There, no reason, no recourse, nothing. Like, bye, 30,000 followers. See ya. <laughs> So get across her page and like it and comment and share. Um, do we, like, I know they don't give you a reason, but do we put it down to the fact that you talk all things taboo, sexual, like, is that, is that what we're basing it on, do you reckon? I mean, well, my ego wants to say yes because I want to be, like, the most, you know, taboo person, but, like, yeah. no, I, I don't know if it is, eh? Like, um, it, it, I really don't know if it is, like, what happened was um, I spoke at the Masculine Symposium, which you're aware of, um, which Aaron runs a little while ago. And when I put up the, the tile of him, uh, of me, from his event, it came up with a warning of, like, too much wording on a photograph means you're spamming or something okay. like that. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, whatever, who cares? And I... I'd only just posted the day before the picture of me speaking with the feminine symposium with all the wording. And I got onto Aaron and I was like, has anyone else had this happen? And he was like, no, nah, nobody. Mm. So I, it, I don't think it was that. It could be, you know, the sex word that I use a lot and I'm not sure. Yeah. But, I have seen other people go, go, jump in. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it just feels like for me because... I don't know if you're aware or not, but like in January, how PayPal just completely yeah. just cut, cut my balls off. Um, took $6,500 um, of my business funds from two different accounts. are just like frozen. See you later. There's no recourse. There's nothing you can do about it. See you in six months and we'll, we'll discuss it then. So that was heaps fun. And this just feels like a same, the same thing. And I'm like, it's really lit a fire under me because I'm like, you know what? I was I was tippy tippy toeing around Instagram like, oh, be careful! You know, thirty thousand followers like you don't want to lose that, mm. and it's my entire business platform. And now it's gone. I'm like, fuck those guys! You know, like yeah. I'm just gonna fucking say what I want and do what I fucking want. And also, I strongly believe, Blake, that um, Instagram and Facebook are going to be like the MySpace in a couple of years. Like, it's just mm. like, I just think there's so much going around now. Like people have gotten onto me since I've become public about, you know, getting shut down and saying, I posted a picture of myself in a swimsuit, super modest, and I'm out. You know, like they've banned me for three days or two weeks or whatever. And yeah. This so. is fascinating. This is what, this is one of the things I love about you. And I, I don't know how you could possibly take it to another level, to be honest with 
but I'm excited <laughs> to see where you're going with it. But one of the things I've always loved about you is, I mean, naturally it kind of makes sense, I guess, to lead by example in the, in the sexuality space, but you are very free in your expression um, and we can kind of go down what that looks like. But I'm really interested in this, essentially, you know, it really kind of caught my eye. I think you used the word untamed potentially in the last couple of days in one of your posts or something along the lines of that. And I was like, it's interesting because it's come up a lot in the last few weeks. And as we get more and more censored on these platforms, which is a fucking joke in itself, um, what I'm feeling kind of called to, and you definitely have been called that direction is showing up even more ourselves and not, not, I don't feel the need to show up edgier intentionally, but mm. I guess as people become fucking beige and boring and we peel away those layers of conditioning that polarizes the difference. So it looks like a bigger thing than it actually is. But I'm interested in, in your take on that. You know, obviously at one of the big parts for momentum is um, relationships and the work that you do and how that looks maybe before and after um, a relationship dynamic or even the freedom that comes, you know, as a female between the kind of um, good girl or the, you know, the girl that needs to show up a certain way and then the liberation, freedom, whatever, you know, connection to self, how that looks post um, the peeling back the layers. What have, what have you seen in terms of a relationship dynamic and or how they show up um, and how they may free, feel free as themselves pre and post the work? <sighs> it's a fucking excellent question. Thank you. Uh, okay, I can answer this like very succinctly, but I'll tell you a little story because stories always help people to. Love stories. Um, Good story. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is super like recent story I want to share. And it was actually around one of the events that I've started running the enlightenment in the bedroom. And so mm -hmm. ran one in Newcastle, ran one in Sydney, um, only a couple of weekends ago. And, um, uh, quite a few people, you know, we could only have 20 at each event, but they were both, you know, totally sold out. So there's like a few people there and just from this kind of like, it's a space where you don't, have to share you don't have to hold hands or open your you know you don't you don't have to say anything you can just sit there and just soak up the information right as the speakers come up and um one beautiful woman bought her husband and he was just like he, he wasn't he's not a dude who's like into this world as such and she's sort of starting to delve into it but um i guess she would have called herself like very shut down. Um, they didn't look at each other in the eye when they were having sex. Um, they, yeah, essentially just were like, we do the thing, but you know, they don't really, they don't really know each other very well. You know, they've been together mm. for a fucking forever. And I think this is something that plays out in a lot of relationship dynamics. It's just like, hey, we do the thing, we have the sex, you know, the man wants the sex, the woman's like, okay, well, if I want to keep the man, I'll do the thing. And it's like, yeah. And after this event, just an event alone, not even the work as such, but just going to an event where we're talking about sexuality and just like people were yelling out like, oh my God, me too. Or like, I want to share my story and all these beautiful things. So it's like pretty cool. But um, afterwards, just having this particular woman on top of like many others, but this particular woman, such a beautiful woman. And she shared that we're like, we're experiencing intimacy that we've never experienced before. We're like having these DMs that we've never had before. We're looking each other in the eye when we're having sex. It's like, it's like we are just like, we've never been in love like this before. And her, her, her man is saying, you've never loved me like this before. Like I'm here for this, but you've never ever loved me like this. And it's just fucking amazing. Like, because, you know, like I, I can, I work with people on one-on-one. -on -one, I work with people in groups. It's mainly women, but I do work with men. Um, but just going to an event, it's just an event, you know, like we call it mm. just an event. It's not a workshop. It's not a space where we're like working with someone particularly just by being in that energy of like, fuck, this is like, 
we can talk about sexuality openly. Okay, great. And then they go and take that. And it's like everything, it just becomes a completely different relationship. And so what that looks like as far as she goes, and I won't, I won't speak about her in particular, but like as a woman, we go from being the woman who's like a little bit, um, this is generally what I see, although there's so much more to it, to the spectrum, but the woman who's shut off from her sexuality, who's like ashamed of being a bit slutty. Like she's like, like if I was to express myself, I'd be judged and, you know, persecuted essentially by society and, and also judged by my husband. I don't want him to think that, you know, I'm that kind of girl and I'm a mom or, you know, might not be. And then afterwards just being like, oh, my God, he loves me. Like he, he loves all of me and he, like he, and then she's just open, you know, she's just like legs open. Look at my pussy. Like I'm fucking here for this. Whereas before it's like lights off. I don't want you to see my ass. I don't want you to see anything. And she's just like, yeah, fucking oath. Like, mm. and what I love about men and you know this about me, I love so much about men, but what I love about men is like you work with the woman. Like I believe working with the woman is the magic, like the real magic because what I believe about men is they're so fucking ready for this. They're just like, babe, I am here for all of you. And women are like, oh, no, 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 you'll judge me. You know, it's like, you don't, you, you're not ready for this or you won't handle me or whatever. And it's like when she opens, he just becomes like, mm, I'm so here for this. Like, I can handle this. So that's essentially I like that. <laughs> Yeah. I, I find this topic fascinating. What do you, when you, when you think of what others might experience in the bedroom, even, even, even you calling it the thing, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, like it's just mind blowing that that's just the, the path for some people. But like, what do you, what does enlightened, enlightened sex look like or enlightened bedroom antics that some people may have never experienced and may not, do you know what I mean? Like for me, I, there's some experiences that I've had where I'm like, I hate to think that some people live a whole life and don't experience something like this. Do you know what I mean? Like do they just read about it in novelty and think that it's made up? Do they just see it on a movie and think it's just Hollywood? Like what, what is that? look like feel like sound like in terms of that <laughs> process that enlightened sex that environment are you asking what that looks like for me in my bedroom if if you wanted to go there but maybe even like what would it look like for a client the before and after in terms of you know, like, what do they feel? What do they notice the difference being in terms of enlightened sex? Obviously, you're talking about an element of freedom, liberation. What else kind of comes to them in terms of the difference between the before and after? Yeah, so I think I could really, um, really bring this back to a human level. And, you know, we think about sex and we think about, like, the, uh, 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 you know, it's like, oh, she's fucking like, she's so open. She's like a porn star. I can do anything to mm. her, you know, like, um, but if we bring it back to a real human level, it's like the intimacy. It's like when we're together, no matter, like, no matter what comes up, we can, we can kind of vibrate that and, and play into the nuances of whatever that is. So we might be fucking, you know, you might be just like fully in the throes of fucking and being choked and like, you know, stepping into like some of your edges and, and then it's like, Oh, actually I'm feeling really fucking like something's just come over me. I'm feeling like really sad or uh, there's grief coming up or I've got a past trauma. That's like, you know, right here for me. And so it's like that, those partners being able to be really intimate and, um, present with each other and just it's almost like I might explain it like being on mushrooms like when you're on mushrooms and you're just deeply in the experience you're not like in your mind and out of out of like what what 
you know, what would people think of me or what, you know, when you're on a hero dose kind of situation, it's like, you know, you're not thinking about what everyone else's experience of you is. So you're like deeply in this experience with your partner or partners mm. and nothing's off the table. It's just like, hey, hold me in my grief or what about like, something like I would love you to have your flaccid cock inside of me, like, and just be with me and breathe with me and um, hold me. And, you know, there's grief coming up for me or there's, there's joy and like giggles and extreme, like, you know, whatever that is. And then just the, the textures of what we, what we step into the flavors, the, I, I just think that really enlightened sex is about, intimacy it's about being mm. able to be really intimate with someone and go i'm here for this like i'm here for this and that's something that i again love about um the the masculine energy in itself is the ability for the masculine just to just to hold presence you know because my masculine holds presence for my partner when he's going through stuff and it's like mm. It's so magic, you know, rather than rather than having great pleasure, just there is great pleasure in the grief and the it's just like fuck, I can go anywhere with you. I can go mm. anywhere with you and we we can just, you know, ride the waves of whatever that is. And and then that makes love making less less hopefully about the climax and the coming and the ejaculating and more about just learning to get to know somebody on a fucking way deeper level. That's a really good answer. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, what do you think is blocking, like if you look at, uh, and um, it'd be interesting from a client point of view, is there reoccurring themes that are blocking intimacy for female and male, are they different blocks that you see as a general rule of thumb? Like what does that look like from, you know, in terms of blocking each other or blocking yourself? Yeah, I think for women there's a pretty big block around being judged. We're afraid of being judged. Mm. We're really afraid of being judged. And so we hold back on so much of our, our true flavour, our essence. We're scared that, you know, yeah, we're scared of not not being loved, not not being safe. We're really scared of not being safe, and safety is fitting in, you know. So it's mm -hmm. like I'm gonna not do anything outlandish, or like I'm not gonna play into my wild, grotesque ugliness because what if he can't handle that? Then I'll I won't be safe anymore. So there's the judgment from the from the woman's perspective, and. For a man, I, you know, I'll speak to this, but like, I'm not a man, obviously, but my masculine um, inside of me feels as though I've got to show up like a certain way. Mm. And, and if I don't, I'm a failure. And so that, that, you know, that feels like something that would be really separating in, in intimacy because it's like, well, you know, I want to, I want to be that for you, you know? And it's like, I, I don't, I don't need you to be anything. I just want to fucking feel you. And, you know, and then, and then there's also the place of, well, if I show my vulnerability, I'm letting my guard down. And then mm. that's like either maybe a sense of, you know, weakness, if that's the story, or maybe it's a sense of, unsafety again you know for a man it's like if I open my heart here and she sees something in me that you know that I don't normally show people it's like fuck that doesn't feel safe either it's yeah it, it, it's a very good point I think definitely a common occurrence for blokes is as well would be very much that performance element of like being in your head it's amazing yeah. at what age it's taught like the performance thing. Like you think about it, you've got 16, 17, 18, up to, you know, mid twenties guys looking about at that, you know, buying fucking random programs and shit off um, the internet around performance. And you never taught about connection or intimacy. Like, like it, most, like most folks wouldn't even know where to look to learn about intimacy and connection. Like it's still, you know, I'm obviously in my mid thirties and it's still not really, 
the topic that's freely spoken of or like this clear path of like, oh, actually, that's what a female wants as opposed to this performance thing that just creates an absolute shitstorm in itself. So um, I'd add that element into there, into the yeah. equation as well, that very kind of performance-driven um, element of, of the masculine. What what are you what's your suggestion when it comes to creating some cells who were just spoken about the blocks, but what is like, if, if a female's either taking that first step or a male's taking that first step into creating more intimacy in their relationship, what does that look like in terms of the first step forward? Obviously being different for everyone, but what, what would you yeah. suggest? I think I think I like probably take it way 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 back and understand what intimacy and understand yourself like what mm. intimacy is for you so you know it's like what I teach in my women's program is like it's the 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 ability to firstly come into like letting go of um there's this patriarchal kind of hold over women and it's not it's not because of the patriarchy it's just what we've what we've created in response to the patriarchy i think is like what we should show up as like because we're an object of men's desire right so it's mm. like um and if we're an object of men's desire then our pleasure looks like this porn essentially right and so stripping those layers back and coming into self-intimacy, so self-pleasure, self-play, self-time, self-touch, you know, just really becoming um, aware of like, okay, if I was my own lover, how would I touch myself? Because, you know, years of intimacy, you know, having been with many different men in my life, I realised not that long ago that, I was being touched how I was presenting. I thought they wanted to touch me. And, you know, does that, like, it's kind of, like, removed. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I was like, well, what does he want to, what does he want to touch me like to experience me and my pleasure? But it's like, mm. okay, what do, what do I actually want? And it's fucking confusing as a woman because it's, it's, it's subconscious. We're so in it of what pleasure, what we think men want that we have no idea about our own, like our own uh, erotic blueprint, or even beyond that, our own uh, our own intimacy. It is, and so mm. um, I even forget your question, but it's but I you know, just really wanted to speak to that. You know, with yeah, no, okay. So taking it back to self intimacy first. How do I like to be touched? How do I like to be um, courted, you know, like what are the things that turn me on? Do I like to have, you know, whispers in my ear or do I, um, do I like to be, you know, taken and really dominated or, you know, I'm sure we all like all of the different flavors when we open to them, but firstly getting really clear on what do I fucking like? And same for men, you know, and it's like rather than stepping into the place that other men have that we've seen in their, performance you know as a man you see other men doing something like oh well that must be what turns women on or that must be the thing you do as a man to get pleasure you know but it's like if you really dropped in as a man into your feminine energy and what i mean by that is your receptive your feeling your energetic energy rather than your like penetrative do the thing energy how would you want to be touched how would you want to be loved you know would you like would you want to be stroked gently or would you want to be like forcefully touched and pushed down or, you know, your body compressed or like tied up or like what are the things, you know? And so I think as we undo society and what we've created in our mind around what we think is wanted by our partner and find out what we actually want and then like portray that, you know, and it's, it's a, a vulnerable space um, because sometimes the things that we want might sound weird or not like the other partner would want, you know. Um, mm. Like for a woman, she might say, I 
um, I actually just want to, I just want to be with you and I want you to, I want you to caress every part of my body, but I don't want you to penetrate me. And for a woman, it's like, if I say that I don't want you to penetrate me, like for, for a woman who's journeyed their sexuality, no worries. Like, cause I'm not afraid for a man to say, well, that doesn't work for me. I'm like, okay, cool. See ya. No worries. Um, but for someone who hasn't, it's like, if I tell him that I don't want to be penetrated, he might not want me and then I'll be rejected. And that's huge for a man or a woman to be rejected. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Plenty in it. I, I'm a man. <laughs> I'm, I find that bit, I was talking to a couple of friends on the weekend. I find the bit really interesting. Again, I can only assume, and I'd be interested in your thoughts, so much conditioning around it of like, if your partner wants something, I, I, I just can't understand how you wouldn't explore it. For, for for the like the relationship, the connection, the exploration. Like for me, I, I was just we literally were speaking on this Saturday night after a few drinks. It was quite an interesting conversation. But I just don't understand that bit. Like, isn't that the fun? Is that does that essentially? Well, I can only assume. You know, there's the layers of conditioning, the fear. Like, what is the resistance from a female point of view? Obviously, working so closely with, with females, does it come back to what you've been saying? Like, if a, if a guy wants to try something and she's resistant to it, what's underlying with that? Do you know what I mean? Like, is it the fear? Is it the, you know, some people don't want to try new things? Like, what do you see as the common thread amongst females yeah. in that space? Or males as well. I should, yeah, both. I'll speak to females because it's like two yeah. things that come up for me and um, hmm. <sighs> yeah. Um. I want I want to get like I want to answer this really clearly. Ask me mm. ask me the specific question again. Why are females resistant? Yeah. I'll say females because you're, you yeah. work more so with females to try new things, going to the edge. Although, as you and I have spoken about before, when they're liberated, they can actually go a lot deeper and darker than um, males, which is a really interesting kind of thing in itself. But bringing it back, why do you see that as the resistance behind that? So one is the mother, the mother of the woman. Um, she can play a really big part in this <laughs> mm. because it's um, as a woman, as a little girl, we, we have a tendency not to go deeper into our sexuality than our mother because if we do that, again, the, the, the mother wound is a huge thing. It encompasses so much. But as a girl or as a woman, if we step beyond what pleasure our mother was open to sharing that she received, then, you know, like her sexuality, if she was liberated, mm. we'll be liberated or we have the capacity to be liberated. But if she was shut down in her sexuality and we go further than that, it is for us a very dangerous place because we will be likely disowned by our mother will be shamed by our mother you know mm. in some way um and it's a fuck it's an absolute fuck because it's like you know it's slut shaming from your mother essentially you know Crazy. and, the, and, the, and like the, that's the not every person has that happen but you know it, it can mm. it's huge it's it's a really scary thing as a girl to to lose your mother's love um, because you're too sexual, because you're too liberated, because you're too, you know, whatever. And so we tend not to do that. We have that um, in our minds. Um, and then there was something else that really, <sighs> that really kind of was sitting here for me, but it's, it's like kind of jumped around the space a little bit because I think because like my vulnerability around this and it's like, I, I'm noticing just as we're speaking that my wound is like, like it's really vibrating through me when we speak about um, why a woman wouldn't want to explore stuff with her partner because 
it's that piece on its own is r really scary and it's 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 essentially like losing losing love and losing your main love in your life you know the the person you were born from it's just a big mm. thing um and then also that is the other piece i wanted to share was we hold as women we hold and i say this to all the men with like so much love but we hold you likely to only want us for our flesh it's like pretty plain and simple and for us it's like it doesn't matter if you're with a man on a one night stand or you have been with him for your whole life you you want him to want you like on an energetic emotional level you know you mm. there's there's as much as some of us have completely closed our hearts because we've been hurt so much it's like if you could go beyond that and underneath that it's like it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's just a very quick thing. It's like when a man feels you emotionally, it's like, oh, my God, I can open. I can be here. But if we have in our mind that he just wants to fuck me, he just wants to fuck me. He just wants to use me. He just wants to, you know, build up his ladder of whatever women he's been with, whatever it is, then we're just like, it's, you know, not open to it. It just doesn't feel safe. Mm. There's a couple of... Um girls here mentioning it it's interesting I've, I've actually never heard of the whole mother wound thing um which i find fascinating i i, I know um a solid portion of our audience is female so I'd, I'd be interested to know how many of them had heard of this kind of mother wounding stuff before but that's yeah fuck that's fascinating um i lost my train of thought and that's absolutely fine <laughs> yeah where was fine. i going where was i going um, so were you going to speak to the yeah, piece go. on, on, yeah, I was just asking if you, were you going to speak to the piece on, um, well, I was thinking of you going to speak to the piece on men and I was just tapping into then like, what has been my experience with men, like men not wanting to open up sexually. Can I speak to that? Yeah, for sure. I'd be fascinated. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, and this we're just going to start on a bit of a surface level. One is th my own experience of men not wanting to open up sexually is they're afraid that they'll be felt. They're afraid that that I will see them. Yep, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Um, and. Yeah, like that, that's definitely my experience. The other is, yeah, because I think that's the biggest piece is the vulnerability piece. That's what I've experienced of men just being like, you know, getting to that point and being like, this is what I want. And men being like, ah, oh, actually, I don't know that I'm up for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> that's how we get it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, think... you know, a apart from that, like I said before, I find that... <sighs> If if men aren't worried about their hearts, then they're they're pretty much up for anything. That's been my experience. But I'd love to hear your take. Well, I think I think it would be two parts. It'd be um, being seen, which yeah. um, definitely has its challenges. But then you know, on the other side of of that, of like being seen, is the most liberating thing ever. Do you know what I mean? In terms of so if we're talking sexually, like not being seen and the, and the blokes that have the issue around that, which I can definitely talk to. And then on the other side of that, if there's, you know, we, we often talk a lot about females being seen and, and being held and whatever else and not, not have this conversation around the masculine because, you know, blokes should have it all sorted and, and they're fine and they're stoic and whatever else. <laughs> But there's a lot to be said. Um, a mate and I who, who have both kind of got female coaches talk about how good it feels to be seen and understood and held from, like, a female point of view in terms of that. Like, you could, you know, you and I, have, I remember the first chat we had. I was like, fuck, she's like, you know, feeling kind of really... Um, 
you know, held when I was working with you in an hour and feeling a, a better sense of connection and trust and whatever else than, you know, other women that I'd spent time with um, over an extended period of time. So it, it, it does work both ways. And I think we often forget that element, but coming back to, um, I can't even remember the original question, but for blokes not wanting to be seen, like that is you, it, that is you right up, full frontal, like being seen in that moment. And if you can get over that hurdle, then it's super liberating. And I guess it kind of talks to the, the, the female as well. And then the other, the other issue I think for a lot of blokes is very much around the performance, like the ego, the performance that just carry on. And if you're not, you know, showing up, showing up with a Superman performance, then, um, you know, you, you have your moments as well. So I think it's heart and performance that, that are real blockers for blokes, I would say. Yeah, yeah, that, that definitely feels feels true. Um, I, I guess, like, the performance piece for me is, um, I was going to mention that, but I was like, well, it's the thing that we were kind of talking about, the thing that stops a man wanting to explore, but sometimes the performance piece actually also feeds in the other way, like from the other end where... Um, yeah, it, the performance piece stops a man from being able to explore because he's just so, he's just, he's afraid of not meeting that performance so he can't perform, you know? It's like... <sighs> well, the, the other thing on that is, he, like, from a performance point of view, if, if she's edgier than him, mm. because, again, there's this ego part that he should be the edgier one, he should have it all sorted. So if she's going real dark, Say, for example, like she was big on choking, he's never choked. Like, he, he, it's like this performance bit of you should know what to do or how to do it. So, if you haven't done that before, or it's edgier or darker than you've ever been before, then he'll, he'll have resistance to that as well from a very kind of ego point of view. So, yeah, the ego and the heart and the performance are definitely blockers for blokes, I think. Um, which is interesting. So when you look at this um, desired society that you and I both would love in terms of liberated, free, untamed, sexually expressive humans, what does that look like to you? Like what does a really enlightened, free relationship look like as opposed to, you know, some couples now, a lot of couples now who... Um, feel restricted, feel that they can't kind of edge. And there's a lot of it, like there's a lot of it going on. So what what would that look like to you? Are we talking, so we're talking in the bedroom or are we talking just on a relating level? Both. Hmm. So the question is what would um, like a sexually liberated couple look like in and out yep. of the bedroom? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and we're talking about a hetero couple. Um, more than likely, that's most of my clients. Just, just I just want to pre-frame that because um, I want. To, I've been really persecuted by um, yeah, same. yeah, by certain yeah, yeah, pieces of like like people in society thinking that I don't advocate for um, trans and non-binary. I absolutely do. I just they're just not my clients. So yeah. Um, so for me, what I think a really sexually and a sexually liberated and liberated relationship looks like is um, a relationship that is very sovereign. The two people are very, if there's two people, they're very sovereign. Um, they have their own lives. They have their own ability to, because um, this, this is like a piece, it's really important is like this, the extra love language like distance like space you know like fucking get out of each other's pockets because it's killing mm. your polarity so having space maybe having your own houses like i'm just actually going into the, like what it would look like um having space so you can not be in that person's pocket all the time you're, you're curious about them you're leaning in rather than being like fucking get out of my space and then also um being attuned, I guess, to what you need and putting yourself first in the sense of like being aware of what, yeah, like it's, it's, it's a piece of self, um, what do you call it, value, 
Because if I don't value myself and I'm, you know, with my man, if I don't value myself, he's going to value me less. So the more I value myself, the more I take my time for myself, the more I go and spend time with my friends and value myself, the more he will value me and he will be um, drawn to me. And it's the same, same the other way around. Yeah. Um, even though it is hard for us women to accept that like a man wants to do something without me, it's like, fuck, oh my God, that's so challenging. But, but once we get over that hurdle and he's a trustworthy man, hopefully, then we go, okay, he values himself. I deeply value him. I want him more, you know? Mm -hmm. And then sexually, um, and like I haven't covered anywhere near the amount of stuff that I would outside. Like I guess being, being aware of um, being in tune energetically I think is a pretty big thing, you know, just mm -hmm. because as much as we like to think that or, or we're led to believe in books that women are the energetics. M men have the same feminine energy inside of them. It's not as strong, but sometimes it can be stronger. And it's like, you know, I know with, um, with my partner, it's like the energetics, it's like, you, you know, when something's off, you know, it can be on the other side of the world and just be like, something's not right. Like what, what, what is it? So being energetically attuned and then intimately, um, sexually, I would say a liberated relationship looks like just fucking doing whatever, whenever. Um, and I don't necessarily mean just like fucking like rabbits all the time. I mean, <sighs> crying with each other. I mean, you know, like doing anal ever so slowly and like reading love letters to each other at the same time. And, you know, um, sitting and yeah just opening up all the kinks like what are the things that I desire that scare the shit out of me to share with you and and um what are the things that I yeah I, I guess that's that's the big thing is just being brave enough to just be yourself in your relationship mm. just fully be yourself yeah You've spoken about it a lot. It, it's it's really interesting that that trust and bravery piece from a from the feminine point of view. What builds like, and it's a common theme as you can imagine when we speak to women, the piece around trust and integrity. What is it that builds trust? And one of the things I find really interesting around this space, and of you know, we're talking females mainly because. Um, they're your, your dominant market. But I'm, I'm interested with the whole trust and the sexual exploration or, or the lack of sometimes for women. Do you think it's relationship-based in terms of, you know, obviously the slut shaming and everything, or do you think, you know, like have blokes actually created this for, for many women from your experience or is it more around society and what their other girlfriends will think and their mother wounds do you think it's actually like blokes have played a big part in it or is it more societal um as a bigger influence i'm interested because uh, you know thinking of, of my mates and you know having a lot of these stories i don't know that um at least in my circles that the blokes have been the big um, instigator of this tightening up, but it's more the society and the shaming that happens in your teens and exactly what you said around the mum, like a lot of that, that happens. What's your experience around that? So are you asking what has stopped women from trusting men? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, well, yeah, I think a lot of it is from what we see and what we're conditioned mm. with. I, I was very conditioned as a little girl that men are fucking simple and they only want one thing and they can't follow through on their word and they don't pay attention. It's like, cool. So what do I do with that? Like mm. as a woman, I can just play that out. I just play that out and pass it on to my daughter and she'll pass it on to her daughter and we'll just go that way, you know? So it's like, it's so important. The messages that we tell our children, um, and the messages we break down for ourselves of what we've been taught. So there's, there's like the, the conditioning, the cultural conditioning, the religious conditioning, the family conditioning, you know, all of the, all of those sort of conditions, I guess. Um, but then there's also, yeah, it makes me actually pretty sad um, to think of 
the way that like young people and I'm talking fucking anyone really are doing intimacy these days, like the, the online dating scene, the it's just fucking throwaway sex and we can't trust it. Like how can you like people's integrity is like people show up to these dates and you're like, cool, like you're a fucking cool dude. I really like you. And then it's just like, what? You're not that person. Like so there's <sighs> what feels true for me to share right now is actually just a piece of um I don't want to fly because it sounds so wanky but it's like just an invitation to people to go a little and maybe it's maybe maybe you'd call it traditional but I don't know I think you'd go way back to call it traditional is to gain trust in a human being which you know I think online dating really pulls us away from that ability to trust somebody because it's so throwaway Hmm. but um is to fucking get to know them like before you get inside somebody or they get they get inside you you know whatever vice versa like do you really like this person i know we have this innate like we want to fuck you know we're like we're highly sexually like you know we're hungry critters as human beings and that's okay but in order to gain trust as a woman you you have to you've got to get to know a man. You've got to get to know him outside of sex because once we have sex, the moment we have sex, we, um, you know, it's the moment we meet you, Blake, that we go, you know, it's just like, oh, he's a good looking guy. I wonder what kind of babies we'd have. Um, would he be able to financially support me? What would he be like in bed? Would my parents like him? We're just like immediately, you know, it's like biologically that's what we're doing because our ovaries are like, okay, do we size this guy up or what's the go here? Um, but if we can push beyond that and like hold ourselves by shoving you in because all the red flags, you know, they go out the door. We can't, we can't seem to navigate those red flags anymore. We just keep going, oh, red flag, red flag. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. The sex is good. That's fine. That's fine. But if we really get to know somebody before we fuck them, it's like, it's a whole different ball game. It's like, okay, now I know I can trust this person because I've seen the way that he treats children. I've seen the way that he treats his mother. I've seen the way that he does his family dinners. I've seen the way that he fucking, you know, treats me as a friend. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen the way that he holds other women in friendships. Can he hold them in friendships or does he want to fuck them all? So it's like that I, we kind of like went around and about with that question, but that feels just like something really important to share. It's just like stop fucking so quickly and get to know somebody. If you want to trust somebody, fucking get to know them. Mm. That's really good. I actually can't remember what the original question was, but I really like the <laughs> advice. All the, all the same. Yeah. Great. Great. <laughs> um, oh, on that. So I tend to ask this question a bit. What are, what are red flags for you when it comes to trust or just, you know, if you want to speak on behalf of women, but what are, what are red flags when it comes to trust being broken or not being there from a, like a safe place when it comes to the masculine? The biggest red flag for me is um, a man who doesn't follow through on his word like that's just like it's a fucking massive red flag. If it's, mm. you know, if he says he is going to um, do something, even if it's for himself and he doesn't do it, it's just like I can't, I can't be in that space. And and that just might be m- me individually. Maybe it's collectively, but I don't hear it a lot from women. But I'm interested to hear the women who are on this and listening to this. Like, let me know how you, yeah, how you feel about this. Of like a man that doesn't follow through on his word is just like. I can't, I can't be there. It's so fucking shaky. It's so unsafe. It feels like the shaky feminine. It's like the, 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 the one who's just like, oh, I'm in. And then I don't show up to the thing. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm totally doing that thing. And I don't do it. And I'm like, I'm going on a new, you know, I'm going to lose 15 kilos and I don't even lose one, you know, it's just like not following through on the word. Um, and then the other thing which has felt pretty strong for me, and it's probably a part of my anxious attachment style 
is um, when a man can't hold back his ego from getting stroked, I guess, from other women. Like he can't hold his sexual energy in the sense of we go out and he's like, he's wanting attention from other women. And it's like, I, I, yeah, that's a, that's a massive red flag for me. If I feel him leaning into other women, like it's different if we have an arrangement that's like, cool, we have an arrangement tonight. You go out and you just fucking like revel in it. We might take somebody home. Great. Like whatever. But, mm. but if that's like, probably if I'm really into him and I, I really want to just be with him like monogamously, if he's like, can't help himself, but like look at other women or like receive their gazes or play with them. That's like a fucking red flag. I just like, cannot handle it. My system can't handle that at all. And it's just, it's an untruth, I think. Yep. Brilliant answer. Mm -hmm. And I would say, um, and it's been confirmed by a couple of chicks on here that, yeah. that, that, um, trust bit about doing what you say you're going to do is I'd say it's, you know, obviously I'm not female, so I'm not going to speak too much, but from my experience asking females a similar question, it's pretty universal of like simplest thing you can do. And at times the hardest thing you can do is exactly what he says he's going to do. Yeah. So I think that's a really good, um, and a few of the boys that are on here said it's, yeah, it, it shows up time and time again. It's a recurring theme from so females as well. So I'm curious, like, from your perspective of women then, because, um, yeah, I'm kind of hitting a little bit of a blank there as to what men feel like would be a red flag with women. I Like, I'm you know, feeling the, the piece around staying centred towards the man, but what's your experience with this? I think a boundaries piece is often the case. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's um, that can show up in a number of ways of, oversharing I, I completely agree with you as well yes. on the so so often the case like, oh, like, did stop. We to, to stop now stop um it's it, it's yeah that piece and then um i think the male attention bit's really interesting as well because you know when you look at it realistically you know i was having this conversation last week if you're in tune and, and as a general rule of thumb, we can say females are more in tune, you know, you know, like when you've emotionally, um, you know, leaked energy or like, you know, I mean, you can talk shit and you can say, oh, no, that was fine. But, you know, on an energetic level, whether you've been a bit leaky with your energy and you've tried to draw in a little bit of a crowd or whatever it might be. Um, and that's, that's, that's a warning sign. And, I also think it can be a warning sign in a very empathetic way, you know, like I'm and, and vice versa. I'd be interested in your opinion on this. Like if you've got stuff, which we all do, it's for me, it's all right. If you own it and you go, look, I was a bit of a dick last night. I was really like trying to draw in blokes attention and I will, you know, if you want to talk it out, we can, if not, I'll hold the space for you to go and like process it and get to the bottom of it. It's when you're lying about it or you, you, you're sugarcoating or whatever where I'm like, mm, I've got no problem with you fucking up when you acknowledge I've got some shit here around blokes that I need to go and deal with or like I keep finding myself trying to draw attention from guys or I'm posting, you know, half naked on social because, you know, really and, and drawn <laughs> to the attention, you know, yeah. and you, you put a beautiful quote to go with it. Like I've got no... <laughs> I've got no problem with the problem itself. It's when you don't own it or you don't, um, you know, acknowledge it. That's when it's a problem. So, you know, one of the big things that you and I have spoken of before is like, depending how you frame up the problems in the relationship, they can be like a gift. Do you know what I mean? Like you're going to get mirrored your shit constantly in a relationship and it's either you know finger pointing this person's annoying this person's frustrating whatever it might be or you look at it and go you know from a growth point of view they're showing me shit that like i need to work on and you know it was recently in, in quite a, a short-term little rello and you know one of the things i noticed in that was i'd spend you know i spent a good 14 or 15 months doing proper education around relationships like yeah. you know qualifications and bits like that you can't read. You can't read your shit in a textbook. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
I've, I've learned a lot about relationships over the last two years in particular, and none of those textbooks were ever going to address my stuff that came up in the relationship. So it's, it's that part as well of having that awareness, that ownership, and, you know, in part seeing your partner as a growth partner. Like, it's a beautiful thing when you can see it as growth and, like, there's been a lot of processing and healing and um, reflection time, you know, over the last kind of couple of months off the back of it. But it's, it's that ownership bit of like, I fucked up or, you know, I was, I was trying to draw in a crowd, whatever it might be. When, when that's there for me, even if, there were, even if it was a significant fuck up, there's the, trust, the trust remains. Hmm. That's interesting. Good. Yeah. yeah um, what did you say? Oh, I was just like feeling into that, you know, whether that would have been something that my past lovers would have, um, would have been down with. Yeah, that's interesting because like, what I hear you saying is like the integrity piece. It's just you know, if you can own it, that's okay. Yeah, right. That's okay. Let's let's let that go. <laughs> let's just let my <laughs> thoughts on that one go. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, it, it's the integrity and trust has come up. You know, obviously, when we speak to females, the integrity and trust has come up a lot from a female point of view and, and it definitely um, comes up in a male point of view, it just shows di very differently. I think as a general rule of thumb, albeit very um, attractive traits. Yeah. Round out the conversation because Instagram cuts me off after an hour. Okay. What, what would be three things you would encourage people to explore to be more in touch with themselves from a sexuality point of view, whether it's as an individual or as a couple? Three things. <clears throat> um, I would, ex I would um, invite people to explore slowness and presence with each other, like as in eye to eye, skin to skin, like being fully present and uncomfortable with each other. Um, as far as self, I would really encourage um, a self pleasure practice and exploration practice, actually like a feminine exploration practice for men and women. So they tap mm. into the feeling side rather than um, just the, the push to the goal side. <sighs> um, and truth, just being really fucking truthful with yourself. Like, like, what's my desire? What do I need right now? What do I want right now? Like, and show up in your fucking truth with yourself of like, yeah, I was, I'm out of integrity or that doesn't feel good for me. Like, don't do that anymore. Or, Please don't do that anymore. This is what I want you to do. You know, like show up in your truth um, with yourself and with your partner. Like, yes, truth, slowness, and learn about your own pleasure. Zoe, it's been very insightful. And juicy as always, whenever we talk all things, your area of expertise. Um, guys, make sure you get across her page. Instagram are fuckers and shut down her old page. So get across. She's got plenty of goodness. Um, and hopefully we can do it again. Amazing. Thanks for having me, Blake. It's always a fucking pleasure with you. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.